West Coast critics have argued for some time that bitumen and heavy crude oil are a lower quality, uh, therefore less desirable, uh, basically a crude that nobody wants. Bernadette Johnson, who's the research manager for Denver-based Drilling Info, explains why that just isn't the case. Canadian production, it's, it's heavy type production, low API. Our refining fleet in the U.S. is actually perfectly suited to, to refine it and to turn it into the most high value refined products like the distillates. The U.S. growing production, it's, it's a fact, right? We know that. We're expecting over a million barrels a day of incremental crude in the U.S. this year. But a lot of that has to be exported. Why doesn't it stay in the U.S. fleet? Because of the type of production. That production growth is actually the, the complete opposite of what our refineries want. Our refineries in the U.S. want heavy barrels. They have the hydrocrackers. They have the coking units. They can turn those barrels into high-value products. Most of the U.S. crude oil supply is light, sweet crude produced in shale basins like the Permian and the Eagle Ford in Texas. Because it's light, refineries can really only use it to make gasoline. While Asian consumption of gasoline will continue to grow for some time, demand in development countries has already flatlined, and according to respected consultancy Wood McKenzie, is expected to peak in 2025. But heavy crude makes an entirely different suite of products that are expected to continue to grow. So the higher, the heavier barrels generally produce more distillates. So what is a distillate? It's diesel, it's jet fuel, um, it's even bunker fuel, right? The bunker fuel market is changing dramatically in 2020. We're going to cut the level of sulfur you're allowed to have in that, that fuel that moves all those ships around globally. We're going to cut that. And so that the, the analog to that would be pretend your car is driving on 87 octane today. Overnight, the government says no more 87 octane. We have to high grade you to 91. You would do away with that 87 market overnight. Refineries would have to take that 87 and high grade it into higher value products. On the shipping fuel side, those are distillates. That's diesel, diesel type materials. That means pretty much overnight, the world, the market is going to have to take 2 million barrels a day of this bunker fuel, turn it into a higher value distillate type product. You get those distillate products from heavy barrels. You don't get just as many distillate products from light barrels like that you get from condensates from the U.S. or ultralights from the Permian. Those ultralights and condensates actually produce more gasoline. Gasoline is not what we actually need more of in the country. Our gasoline demand is, is declining. So globally, the distillate markets are expanding. That means a little bit higher price. It also means the types of crude that produce more of those higher value distillates is what our refineries demand. And so that's exactly what's happening. That's why we pull in 3 million barrels a day from Canada instead of refining our own domestic crude. And we're going to continue to see that in the future. We've, we've watched in uh, part, equal parts fascination and horror as Venezuela has uh, imploded over the last couple of years. And of course, their exports, their production and their exports are declining significantly. What is that? And a lot of it went to, to the, Gulf, uh, the Gulf Coast. So what does that decline in, uh, in imports into the U.S. mean for demand for, uh, for Canadian heavy? Sure. So that's a great question. So Venezuela's dropped from about 2.1 million barrels a day of production back in early 17. Today they're producing about 800,000 barrels a day of production. So that's a dramatic drop. And that those are like you said, are the heavier barrels that typically came into the U.S. Gulf Coast. We refined them in Pad 3. We turned them into those higher value products. And a lot of it we sent out again or we used domestically. If we don't have that source of heavies, it means the Canadian heavies are even more important. Right, that demand, if you, if, so to speak, would increase, or that would be even stickier in the U.S. market because we don't have access to those Venezuelan anymore. Which means more and more Canadian likely to land even in Pad Three, not just the Mid-Continent, but even the Gulf Coast, to to serve that need. Crude oil markets are likely to face some stiff headwinds over the next few years, thanks in part to IMO 2020 sulfur regulations and also uh, potential fuel substitution by airlines and long haul freight. But many forecasters are calling for a 30% increase in global energy demand driven by India and China. So some of that is likely to be undoubtedly be diesel and gasoline. So even though the future for all crude oil grades is getting more and more uncertain, it seems that heavy crude oil is going to be around for a little while yet.